Hello, this is a virtual pathology specimen showing a coronal section of the head with the brain removed. The diagnosis is nasopharyngeal carcinoma and we are looking now at the posterior view. We have part of the right ear here. Let me just turn this around. This is the anterior view and we can see here the sphenoid sinus. So this is the region of the midline. This is the tongue and this is the soft palate. Posteriorly, we can see that there is a pale, tan, fleshy mass in the region of the right nasopharynx. Let me just magnify this. And it is partially eroding into the adjacent sphenoid bone. So this is the gross appearance of nasopharyngeal carcinoma. This tumor is very rare in some parts of the world, for example, in the West. However, it is common in Southeast Asia and parts of Southern China. Let's learn a little bit more about nasopharyngeal carcinoma. This is a tumor that occurs in different age groups, depending on the geographic location. For example, in Africa, it tends to occur in children. However, in Southeast Asia and Southern China, it is a disease of adults and it is rare in the West. Some important predisposing factors to note is the association with EBV infection. So often these patients will have positive Epstein-Barr virus serology, and this is also associated with the intake or ingestion of foods that are rich in nitrosamines, for example, fermented food. Clinically, these tumors tend to present relatively late. One of the commonest presentations is actually cervical lymph node enlargement due to metastases. However, these tumors can also sometimes present with nasal obstruction as well as epistaxis, which is not surprising because of the location in the nasopharynx. It can also block the eustachian tube, which is very nearby, giving rise to tinnitus and invasion into the base of the skull or the points of exit of the cranial nerves can actually give rise to cranial nerve palsies, for example, third to sixth nerve palsies if it involves the region of the middle cranial fossa as well as the cavernous sinus. And at the base of the skull, the exit points of the cranial nerves nine to 12. Microscopically, these tumors are classified by the World Health Organization into several main types. One of the main types is non-keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma, which can be differentiated or undifferentiated as we see here. It is not obviously keratinizing or squamous in terms of its appearance. And this is the commonest type seen in Southeast Asia. It can also be keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma and basaloid squamous cell carcinoma. Radiotherapy is the main line of treatment and this tumor is usually very responsive. The prognosis for five years is reasonable at about 65% for the non-keratinizing subtypes. Unfortunately, the keratinizing types have a worse prognosis. This is the same specimen taken from our virtual pathology museum and this is from our online pathology resource, PathWeb. It is free of charge and you can register. The link is provided in the video description or you can simply Google PathWeb. So here in summary is the tumor in the right side of the nasopharynx. We can see that it is invading into the sphenoid bone and we can imagine how this tumor in this location can give rise to nasal obstruction, tinnitus due to obstruction of the eustachian tube, and also epistaxis and potentially cranial nerve damage. This specimen also has some labels, so you can explore this. And scrolling down, there are clinical vignettes, gross descriptions, as well as gross images, microscopic images showing the example here of an undifferentiated, non-keratinizing nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Often these tumors are very closely associated with lymphocytes. And here is an accompanying video describing the microscopic features. Thank you.